Good morning and welcome to the Quasar Training. This is the part one, which we update in 2021, and my name is Piotr. And an important announcement is that currently you should use Quasar version 1.5.0. Whenever you watch this training series, you should refer back either to those slides or to the first part of the, of the training and scroll down into YouTube video description to see which is the currently recommended Quasar version. So um, we are remaking this training um, in 2021 for version 1.5.0, although most of it is 1.3.11 uh, and that should be still compatible. Um, the reason for us remaking this is YouTube uh, removed annotations, so we cannot uh, anymore easily tell you which version you should use. Therefore, Please, um, please keep an eye on, on this currently recommended Quasar version, either in those slides or in the YouTube video description. Um, later in the slides, we will also have to refer back to the version of so-called Open 62541 Compact. Um, so the, the version that goes along Quasar version is version 136. In this part, we'll try to walk you from starting from ground zero, that basically means that you just heard about Quasar and you never used this, up to the point when you can get your first OPCUA, Quasar-based OPCUA server running, and that should take us maybe five minutes. So um, we'll show you a bit on where to find the information and how to prepare your uh, work environment, then how to clone Quasar, then how to make a basic Quasar project, how to configure the build of a Quasar project and how to build it, and then how to run the server and connect to it with UA Expert. So um, I'll be keeping this uh, hands-on demonstration along, along the slides. So I'll try to perform this, the very same steps that you should perform when, when trying to uh, walk through this part. And the text in violet is the commands in Linux. So first of all, I'll perform this training in my temporary directory. Okay, then um, it'd be great to make sure that all dependencies that Quasar needs are installed. And how do you learn about dependencies? You can open this link. Uh, this is the same file that actually comes from, it actually comes from the Quasar GitHub repo. So you will also have this file in a few, few minutes. But basically where you find this is the list of dependencies. And if you have one of the following systems, so anything that is a, a spin-off of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, so for instance, CentOS um, on, in some of the versions, or Ubuntu or Microsoft Windows even, uh, for those we have specific instructions. So let's say you have CentOS 8, you can find the specific instructions there. Um, if not for remaining system, like all the types of Linux, there's some general remarks what you need to, um, to, to have to start using Quasar. Anyway, um, once you have those dependencies, so either obtained by those remarks and instructions or kind of differently, then, um, so I'm in my temporary directory, and what I'm going right now is I'm going to simply copy-paste this command for uh, git clone, what is important here, and many people forget, is that minus minus recursive, because we have some, uh, usually we have some follow-up uh, or uh, git submodule dependencies, so you really need to have this minus minus recursive. Okay, so once we have it, uh, this basically means that we have a Quasar um, framework uh, cloned. By the way, this file, I, I, we can actually enter this directory, and the file which we've been just reading um, on the dependencies is in the documentation. So you can also open the very same file here in a web browser. And voila, you have the same file. In the next step, uh, we'll create a basic ways project. I'm entering the directory, which we just cloned. Okay, I did it. And I'm gonna use the command, which is quasapy create project. And here, for information, a, about 100% of commands that you're gonna request um, Quasar to do, they are invoked via this QuasarPy entry point. Okay, so QuasarPy create project, and then I go to the same TMP and uh, OPCUA server. 
And voila, what Quasar does for you is it creates a, a OPC UA server project, which actually for just for information, the same project you can further use to create clients or many other things. But the, the, the server project is, is kind of like the basic unit of, of, of working with, uh, with Quasar projects, something that you about always need to have. So the script tells you that it created a new Quasar project um, using which version of Quasar, so that is 1.5.0, and then some remarks on where to go from now. So at this stage, it's very important to make the initial commit of this project. We usually use Git, but the same would apply to any, um, any other version control system out there. So let me go to that directory, so TMP OPC UA server. And um, let me create an empty git repo, then add about anything. Those are reference files, so in any case, you should add them. They're not yet modified by hand, so there's no, no danger. And I'm just committing this as some, as some initial commit. Voila. So that means that we basically created a Quasar project and uh, we, we committed a, the initial commit, right? So then we can jump to the step three, which is on how to configure the build and um, how to actually build it, so how to obtain something that can be executed and, um, and provide some OPC UA connectivity. And here comes an important point. So uh, Quasar, any Quasar project can be built with either paid and licensed, co licensed components like Unified Automation um, Toolkit, or it can be built with uh, free and open source components. So we have two versions, two options to choose from. And because uh, we assume that most of you will not yet have the paid uh, paid component and the, the, the open source one can do as well for many, many different tasks, for majority of tasks that you can achieve with Kaiser, it can do equally well. Uh, we'll perform the training with the free and open source version and you can find in the later, um, one of the later parts of this um, training series, you can find the information how to, how to run it on the uni uh, Unified um, Automation Toolkit. So in order to have this uh, working with this free and open source uh, OPC UA provider, which is called Open 62541 uh, Compact, uh, we, the Quasar team, have made a, a kind of a library which you have to enable in Quasar. It's called Open 62541 Compact. And now I'm about to enable it. That means I do Quasar Pi, enable module, open 62541, compat, and now the version. And the current version is 136. And usually, those versions are backwards compatible, but if you move to a, a newer version of Quasar, sometimes you will have to also move to newer version of open 62541, compat, because simply it has the required features. So once again, um, I, I would like to emphasize the importance of this slide where we tell you which is the current version of Quasar, and then which is the matching version of Open 62541 Compact in case you use it, and that's probably gonna happen for most of you, at least in the beginning. So voila, I, I asked Quasar to enable this model for me. Voila. And then um, to tell Quasar like where those dependencies are, what are the build options, etc. We need, a, we need a file called build config, which basically is a simple CMake file with a couple of, couple of uh, settings. So this file, you can take the file that we distribute along Quasar. Uh, so you can just take it directly from where you cloned uh, Quasar. So that would be uh, Quasar, and then it's called open 62541 config.cmake. We copy it to our current Quasar directory, and we use the command set build config open. Uh, 65 config cmake. Voila, it's been set. Good. Um, so from, from that point on, we can simply build our server. Let's try it. Voila, the build is done, and now we can move to the point four, which is how to run the server. So 
the build is done in a directory called by default it's called build you can change later if, if, if there's a strong reason though probably there isn't um, and inside the bin directory of this uh, build directory you will find a file called opcua server and this is the executable of the quasar server and um, voila so you can run it like that and an important point to uh, to say here is that a, a an instance of the quasar a base opc a7 needs some s something called config file and the config file is um is are, are the opc ua instances objects variables different things that we will later on refer to uh, in future in future parts of the training so just for your information if you run it like that it's gonna take the the, the, the basically empty config file which is this config xml so that's perfectly fine for this for this part and in future maybe we'll start using different config files voila config and what it tells us is well first of all uh, that the most important message is that the tcp network layer is listening and this actually comes from open 62541 so if you build this with the paid product it will look slightly differently though it still will print you the endpoint url and that the server is listening and that it will keep listening and operating until you press ctrl c or send a equivalent signal that means that we can take some uh, common uh, OPC client to connect to the server. So um, we most often take UAExpert. It's free and you can get it from the Unified Automation uh, website. And then uh, there's a couple of, couple of different ways how you can connect to OPC servers with discovery without. So I'm going to take something which is probably the most direct. So I'm going to add server without discovery yet. I'm going to go into advanced and then what I'm going to do is I will copy this endpoint URL and paste it here into endpoint URL which basically is the same uh, probably I used this in the past so I can cl click on OK then the plug icon to connect and there I see my address space it just has like two two objects are they directly on at the let's say root level so we have server which comes from this is something that comes from the basic opc uh, information model and then th th there is something that comes is kind of uh, brought in by quasar itself it's called standard metadata for instance you can look into quasar version and there you can see that the version use of uh, version of, of quasar used was one five zero Voila, so that was, um, that was the part one um, of this training. And in the next parts, you will see how to actually start adding objects, variables, etc., etc., different things. Um, once again, I'd like to emphasize the importance of, of using the right version. So please, whenever you're following this um, training series, please refer back either to this slide or look in the video description of those YouTube videos to find which is the currently recommended Quasar version. And um, if you think you could help us uh, in some way by improving this training, for instance, by saying relevant comments, what should be made better, etc., cetera, um, you can do that uh, sending us email or a GitHub ticket or something like this. Thank you.